Hello and welcome to the Coding Bytes. I am Abhishek Parmar and in this video we are going to solve some pseudo codes which are going to be asked in online test of Capgemini. So the first question is what will be the output of n is equal to 127. So as you can see here this is the pseudo code. So you will have to find the value of s when n is equal to 127. Now before solving this question I would like to tell you some points about the pseudo codes that pseudo codes are the codes which are written in English language in normal language not in a particular programming language like C, C++ or Java. So this code is just given to check your logic whether you have understanding of the programming logics or not. So now let's see how we can solve this problem. So first of all we have a statement read n which means you will have to take the input from user. So as the input n is given 127. So with this I am also representing the variables which are being used in this particular program. So here I have declared n and the value of n is 127. Now after this in the second line there are two variables i and s. Both have the value 0. So I have represented i and s with value zeros. After that there is a function called sample which is taking one argument n and then there is a body of function and then at the end you can see there is a statement and function which means this is the complete body of the function sample. So in this function sample we have a while loop and the condition of while loop is n greater than 0 which means till n is greater than 0 this loop will iterate. Now, now similarly for this while loop you can see there is a statement called end while which means this is the body of a while loop. Now inside this while loop for the particular value of 127 if we run this function so first of all we will reach while n greater than 0. So the condition is true. So let's say we are at this line r is equals to n modulo division 10. So n modulo division 10 will give us 7. Now this 7 will be stored inside the variable r. Now in the next statement p is equals to 8 to the power i. So here we have 8 to the power i. This symbol is an operator in most of the languages but here it means the power of 8 as we use in English language. So we can simply say 8 to the power 0 because i is 0 here. So 8 to the power 0 will be give us 1. So we will assign 1 into p. Now in the next statement s is equals to s plus p into r we will first evaluate p into r. So here p is 1 and r is 7. So the statement will become like 0 plus 1 into 7. So this complete statement will give us 7. That means s will be assigned with 7. Now in the next statement i plus plus i will increment by 1. Now in the next line n is equals to n divided by 10. So this line will simply remove 7 from 127. Now n will become 12. Now after that we will again test the condition n greater than 0. So now as you can see n is 12. So because of this we will go to the next statement r is equals to n modulo division 10. Now this time r will hold 2. After that p is equals to 8 to the power i. Now this time we have i is equals to 1. So 8 to the power 1 will give us 8. So that means the value of p will become 8. Now in the next statement s plus p into r we will have a statement like s is equals to 7 plus 8 into 2 and the value of s will become 23. Now i will be incremented by 1 and now it will become 2. Now due to the next statement n is equals to n divided by 10 n will become 1. Then once again we will check the condition n greater than 0 so as n is 1 so it is greater than 0 then we will move inside this loop and r is equals to n modulo division 10 so because of this line r will become 1. Now this time p is equals to 8 to the power i will give us 64 because 8 to the power i and i is 2 here. So this will give us 64. Then in the next line we will have 23 plus 64 into 1 and this will give us 87. Now 87 will be stored inside s and then incrementing the value of i will give us 3 and n will become 0. After this we will again test the condition n greater than 0 but this time n is 0 so this time this loop will not iterate anymore and we will get 87. So here we are returning the value of s and as you can see the value of s is 87. So the answer of this particular pseudocode is 87. Now moving to the next question. So in this question we have integer n which means a variable n. So as you can see I have declared a variable n 
and the initial value of n is 3 because inside this for loop we are uh, initializing n with 3 now after that we will test the condition n not equals to 0 so as n is 3 this condition is true so we will move to the next statement print n now because of this print n 3 will be displayed on screen but due to next statement n is equals to n minus 1 n will be decremented and now it will become 2 and now due to the decrement statement n will again decremented by 1 and now it will become 1 and again we will check the condition n not equals to 0 so as n is not equals to 0 the condition will be true and we will again enter this for loop and due to the next statement print n we will display the value of n which is 1 now after this the next statement is n is equals to n minus 1 so this will again make n 0 now moving forward due to n minus minus again n will be decremented by 1 and now n will become minus 1 now again checking the condition n not equals to 0 we can clearly say that n is minus 1 and it is not equals to 0 that means again minus 1 will be displayed on the screen as you can see from the four options given you can clearly say there is no option which has minus 1 but as you can see n is not equals to 0 is our test condition so n will never become 0 due to this n minus minus so we can simply say this is an infinite loop so our answer will be d so moving to the next question now in this question we have two variables a and b and the initial value of a is 8 and the initial value of b is 9 and we have a function input a input b there are two arguments of this function and then we have to find the output of this particular function so when this function is executed first of all this if statement will be executed now if this statement is true then the next part return function ba will be executed so as you can see a is 8 and b is 9 so the condition is true so we will go to the next statement return function ba which means our statement will become return function 98 because the value of a and b are swapped here so after this Again this function will be executed because we are calling the function again which means the function is calling itself. So you can say this is a recursive call. Now function 98 will call itself and then again it will test the condition if a less than b. Now as you can see this time a and b are swapped. So 9 is less than 8 so this condition will become false. So we will move to else if. Now the else if condition is b not equals to 0 which is also true here because b is 8. So the statement a plus function a b minus 1 will be executed. So this function will become return 9 plus function 9 7. As you can see here the second value is passed as b minus 1. So this will make b as 7. Now after this again this function will be called and again we will check the same condition if a less than b. Now in this condition also a is 9 and b is 7. So this condition is also false. Again we will go to the else if condition and here we will check b not equals to 0. So as you can see b is not equals to 0. So again this statement will be called. So there will be a recursive call again. But this time the value of a is 9 and the value of b is 7. So due to this the second argument will be 6. Similarly, there will be five more recursive calls and the last function call will be function 90 because when b will become equals to 0 then only our function will return 0. So in that case the value of function 90 will be 0 as you can see here. So the result of 9 plus 0 will become 9. So just because this is a recursive call so this will return the value to the function which has called it. So value 9 will be returned to the upper function and there 9 plus 9 will become 18 and then this 18 will be returned to its upper function where 9 plus 18 will become 27. Similarly all the 9's will be added and we can simply say 9 into 8 that means 8 times this function has been called. So 9 into 8 is 72. So we can simply say our answer is 72 because the value that we are getting from this function is 72. Now moving to the fourth question. So in this question, the first statement is the read number, which means we will read a number from user and uh, the number is 2630. So I have created a variable number and the value of number is 2630. After that, there is a function named divisible, which is taking one argument number. And inside this function, we have a variable even counter 
so i have taken even counter and the value of even counter is 0 then there is a variable number remainder and uh, it is taking the value of number so i have created a number remainder and the value of number remainder is 2630 after this this is a condition itself because this loop will iterate till our number remainder becomes 0 so this is our condition and inside this we have first line digit equals to number remainder modulo division 10 so this will simply take 0 from number and it will assign 0 to digit now in the next line there is a condition if digit not equals to 0 and number modulo division digit double equals to 0 that means if both of these conditions are true then even counter will increment by 1 but in this case as you can see digit is 0 so this statement is false so we will simply move forward without executing this even counter equals to even counter plus 1 and then in the next line number remainder will be divided by 10 so the number remainder will now become 263 now once again we will go to the test condition while number remainder so now number remainder is 263 and this time our digit will hold 3 now once again we will test this condition if digit not equals to 0 so as you can see digit is 3 that means this condition is true and number modulo division digit double equals to 0 which means if 2630 is divisible by 3 then this condition will return true but as you can see 2630 is not divisible by 3 this means this statement will again return false and we will again move to the next statement number reminder equals to number reminder divided by 10 and due to this number reminder will now become 26 now still our condition is true so this time our digit will hold 6 once again we are checking the condition if digit not equals to 0 so as you can see digit is 6 that means this condition is true but the next statement number modulo division digit that means 2630 modulo division 6 is not equals to 0 so this statement will again give us false so again we will move to the next statement which is this statement and because of this statement number reminder will now become 2 and now this time also the condition is true so now this time our digit will hold 2 and now we are checking the condition if digit not equals to 0 so digit is not equals to 0 and number modulo division digit so this will become 2630 modulo division 2 and this time we will get the result 0 so this condition will become true so we will move to the next statement which is even counter is equals to even counter plus 1 so this statement will make even counter incremented by 1 and then we will move to this statement and because of this statement number reminder will now become 0 so this loop will not iterate anymore and our answer is 1 because we have to return the value of even counter from this function now moving forward this is the last question of this video in this question we have given two values a and b the value of a is 56 and the value of b is 876 and we have another variable t whose value is 0 so first of all inside this function we will go to this statement while b not equals to 0 and the condition is true so we will go to the next statement t equals to t plus a which means our t will become 56 now after this because of this line our b will be decremented by 1 and this will now become 875 and after this we will again check the condition b not equals to 0 so as you can see b is not equals to 0 that means the condition is true so we will again move to the statement t equals to t plus a and because of this t will now become 112 and after that because of b equals to b minus 1 now b will become 874 then similarly we will again check the condition b not equals to 0 and then again we will add the value of a in t so this process will continue till our b becomes 0 now after 876 iteration our b will become 0 so we are not going to check for each iteration we can simply say 876 into 56 this will be our answer because after 876 iterations b is going to be 0 and in each iteration b is decremented by 1 so our answer will be 49056 so that's it for today i hope you understood all the solutions if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section below and also for more updates do not forget to subscribe this channel thanks for watching